Wisdom is such a wonderful, wonderful thing, isn't it? Everyone really wants wisdom. I haven't met anyone who just said, I'm waiting around to be stupid. We all want wisdom because we equate wisdom with success. We need wisdom with our relationships. We need wisdom with our health. We need wisdom with our wealth, uh, with our jobs. Constantly, we need wisdom. And today, I want you to call in and say, what kind of wisdom would you like? Is it for a job? For a family situation, just something very brief. We don't counsel. Get on the website and say, I need this kind of wisdom. Why do I want you to call? Because the Bible tells us how to get wisdom. It says to ask. That's what it says. And you know, what happened to Solomon? He asked for wisdom and he got overflowing wisdom. James, New Testament says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. So I believe in calling our prayer line you are asking for wisdom and God hears that. He sees that. He answers that and how key it is. And I've done some really stupid things, stupid things because I didn't ask for wisdom or didn't follow the wisdom that I asked for. So wisdom is key for you today. Don't, don't move the dial. Stay right here with this program. Very important to you. You know, Mom, I think wisdom is also uh, comes with the people that you associate with. Oh, yeah. And it's very important because if you hang around stupid people, you're not going to get good nope. results. Nope. You hang around smart people, wise people, you get good results. And, and I find myself, it's very interesting who I find myself uh, drawn toward. Yeah. I'm drawn towards people who are smarter than me. Yeah. And then I like to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because number one, I don't want to reveal, you know, how right, silly right. or ignorant I am. But number two, when I'm quiet, I can listen and I get stuff from them. But wisdom is very important. We get wisdom in lots of different ways. God gives us wisdom in lots of different ways. But it's very important who we hang around with because we get wisdom from different people, different sources, and God wants to speak to us. I'm thinking of this because the other day I was in a meeting and I was talking about some of the challenges, you know, as far as, okay, how are we going to resolve this issue? This is a bit of a challenge. This is a problem. What are we going to do? And, and I wasn't necessarily asking anybody for solutions, but uh, I was listening, you know, and, and it was interesting because uh, the people that were in this meeting are extremely intelligent people. I mean, and they're wise, they have good counsel, mm -hmm. they're godly. And I'm sitting in this meeting and they shoot off like two or three things right off the bat. Well, you ought to do this, you ought to do this. And it's fascinating because that really resonated in my heart. It's like, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, fantastic. And that's not, and so it really helped me to sit and listen and be around wise people because it increased, <laughs> increases yeah. my wisdom. And maybe you have some friendships right now that are really lousy friendships. Maybe they don't speak life into you. Maybe they're not wise. Maybe there's a lot of superficial froth and foolishness. You talk about nothing. I want to challenge you today that you consider your relationships because relationships are not just there for kind of the froth superficial. There's also an intent. God has an intent with relationships, first and foremost with your relationship with him vertically but also horizontally, who's in your life? Who is speaking into your life? And friendship wise, who are the friends that you allow to speak into your life? Who do you share your anxieties with, your frustrations with? Because what they do with those things, do they build your faith? Do they make you focus on God? Do they bring you back to the word of God? Or do they just say, oh, that's too bad for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do they, they affirm the negative or do they help you look up? Because the point of it is wise counsel, wise friends are going to always help you look up, look to the word, trust in Jesus. And so if you're struggling with your friendships, please call right now. We want to pray for you that God would help you to have wise friends, godly counsel in your life. And if you can't call, then obviously drop us a line through the mail or get on our website and say, pray for me. Pray that I pick good friends. Mom, that's so essential. It's key. And looking for areas of where you can find wisdom. Uh, when I first started traveling, you know, I would go to small churches mm -hmm. and so on. And I'd always ask the pastor, what do you study? Yep. What do you like to preach? Yep. What are your favorite books? And I'm telling you, I would glean mm -hmm. from these pastors and they were more than willing to share totally. with me. And so I have found that if you will take the time mm -hmm. to listen, shut mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. listen, you don't know it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, even 
uh, in situations even on airplanes, some, when I've witnessed people sometimes, you know, they'll tell me what their career is mm -hmm. and they'll share some things that really are wisdom. If you want wisdom, mm -hmm. be in a constant habit mm -hmm. of gleaning. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. looking, always mm -hmm. listening, always gleaning. Selective gleaning. Yeah. Because some things yeah, are not, you don't, you don't read. Ungodly you need to, wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there is ungodly wisdom. That's right. And there ways is. that some people do things that are unhealthy, don't they don't part. have integrity, and it's not kingdom building. That's it's, right. There's no love in it. So there's selective gleaning. But I'm exactly on the same page with you. I'll do the same thing now. I travel. In yeah. fact, on my Facebook the other day, I asked, you know, tell me what you're reading. Oh, my goodness, Mom. I had this <laughs> list. Yeah. It was a fantastic list. And someone in the middle of it made the observation. What a great list of books to read. Thank you so much, because now I have some good ideas on what to read. Yeah. I mean, those are just great opportunities. If you ask, and mm -hmm. asking for wisdom mm -hmm. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Sarah Jehoshaphat, yep. uh, a very interesting king. When you look at all of the kings of Judah, mm -hmm. he was absolutely one of the best kings. Mm -hmm. He came into the throne with a heart for God mm -hmm. and really went after it wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I mean, he uh, did everything to get the priesthood where it should be, everything for the temple worship where it should be. He sent out teaching priests mm -hmm. to teach the whole land. He mm -hmm. wanted them taught the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, he did his army very well. I mean, he used wisdom in just about every segment mm -hmm. of his kingdom that he could use it in. He was a man of prayer. He surrounded himself with wise people, but he also was wise in the way he handled the people mm -hmm. and how he encouraged the priests. His encouragement right. to the priests is so wonderful. Right. So he, he learned how to apply wisdom with people mm -hmm. and how to be a people person. Mm -hmm. And all of our lives, all of our lives, we're going to be involved with people mm -hmm key people. That's true. And so that's very important yep. that we learn from them and take the yep. time from them. But he also got into a compromising situation mm -hmm. and that was bad. So he's trying to be wise, handle people wisely, develop people. But then he wanted peace so badly with the Northern Kingdom right. that he uh, got into an alliance mm -hmm. ugh, with uh, Ahab and Jezebel's mm -hmm. family. That was really, really bad news mm -hmm. because he wanted to have peace with them. Mm -hmm. So he had a son mm -hmm. named Jehoram and Ahab and Jezebel, they also had a son named Jehoram, but they also had a daughter named Athaliah. Oof. And you know, she she's worse awful. than Jezebel. Ugh. Yeah, that's Jezebel she and was Ahab's daughter. horrible. And he married Ugh. Jehoram, his Ugh. son, to Athaliah Ugh. in order to have peace. Ugh. So I think we have to be careful that we don't get into a compromising wisdom mm -hmm. in trying to have, and Sarah opened this program about relationships. And if you feel you're in a compromising situation, I'd like for you to call for prayer. We're not gonna counsel, but I'd like for you to call for prayer or get on the website and leave your name and, and the need. Because folks, uh, Jehoshaphat, he is the best king but all through his life, you see him getting into compromising situations. Another one, Sarah, uh, is that when King Jehoram of the Northern Kingdom mm -hmm. wants to go out and fight with the Moabites, right. he sends to Jehoshaphat and said, would you help me? And I think, Jehoshaphat, this is so stupid. You're so wise and so stupid in this. Jehoshaphat said, my men are like your right. men. Right. Well, yes, we'll go help you. And so he sends his men into the situation, goes into the situation, and God rescues them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is rescues the one, idiots. Mom, is this one, because this is in Second Chronicles 17, and he goes on to like through 20 or whatever, 21. Yeah. Is this the one where the Jehoram dresses up and pretends he's not the king? Is that the one? That's one of them, but that's not the Moabite oh, one. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's more than one occasion. Yeah. And you think, turn the light on. Yeah. And so you can be very wise in some places and very stupid mm -hmm. in others. And this is why it pays to surround yourself with wise people. Right. And in the multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. And not to think you know it all. Right. You know, better to learn and not try to be right every time, mm -hmm. but to learn and to be honest about But he never seems to get honest mm -hmm. because he gets involved in a marital situation, mm -hmm. he gets involved with the Moabites, mm -hmm. he gets involved in a battle. And imagine Ahab tells him, dress up like me. Mm -hmm. 
How? Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, and you're gonna be the decoy. Yeah. He turns Jehoshaphat into a decoy, and Jehoshaphat does it. I know. I'm like, what are you thinking? Are you obtuse? That's stupid. You're, he's going to dress up and be the king, and you're going to, and I'm like, that, that's ridiculous. That's not wisdom. That's foolishness. And I think we need to ask God, show me weak areas. Mm -hmm. Don't think, right. because you've asked for wisdom, that you're smart in everything. Mm -hmm. Say, show me weak areas, mm -hmm. and I would strongly suggest you have some people who will be honest right. with you, right. that you, you're not going to fall apart when they come to you about it. So ask them, say, do you see some areas where I'm weak? Right, and some blind decisions? spots. These were blind spots. I don't oh. think Jehoshaphat saw it. And, I don't either. And I mean, just total blind spots. Blind spots is in his interactions with the Northern Kingdom. Totally. And mom, that's absolutely fantastic wisdom. Get people around you yeah. who will, who will kind of open your eyes to those yeah. blind spots. And the, what I love about the Holy Spirit, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. Right. And the Spirit of Truth leads you into truth. Right. And those blind spots are areas where we don't have truth. Right. And so I always think that's very important. The Holy Spirit uses people. And I also try and listen to the Holy Spirit to reveal to me truth. Because those blind spots are in, in ev inevitably, there's something, there's a desire there, there's a weakness, there's some magnetic attraction right. where you're pulled to something oh, yeah. that's destructive and you're not aware of it. So I want to encourage you that you have people around you who are wise, wiser than you, but also that you really have it nestled in into your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because I have found from time and time and time again, the Holy Spirit will set off like a little alarm you know, sound, this is bad, Sarah, something's wrong. And, and it's that scratchy, mm, I don't feel good about this, there's something the unsettling. And the Holy Spirit will do that to me. And whenever I avoid that alarm or I ignore it or just kind of blow it off, oh, it's no big deal, you know, maybe it's a pizza problem or maybe there's too much coffee, blah, 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 I almost always regret it. So I encourage you, we're going to continue to talk about wisdom in just a few minutes here. You need to go to Johannesburg, South Africa with Sarah and me for the most blessed time of your life to minister. It will be so awesome and you can get your brochure today. Is that right? That's right. Call or get on the website for the information. And we have an additional opportunity, yes. Mom, uh, for an excursion to Cape Town to see a safari as well as Robbins Island where Nelson Mandela was. Um, absolutely amazing things that are in Cape Town, that's an additional excursion. But the primary thing we want to encourage you with here is our ministry opportunities in Johannesburg. We're going to be ministering at nighttime as well as a Saving Moses opportunity. This is a life-changing trip and you don't want to miss out. Mom, how can they come? They can come and get the brochure, but you could also scholarship someone to go. And a group of you could get together and scholarship your pastor and totally bless him and change his life. We want to hear from you today. We're going to talk and continue talking today about wisdom. But before we jump back in and continue to talk about wisdom, there's a verse that God dropped in my heart, and I want to share this with you. It will totally encourage you. And it's 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. And it says, The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. 
And I want to encourage you today that God is looking for people whose hearts are fully committed to Him. He's looking and saying, are you committed? Are you committed? Are you committed? Fully committed. And when He finds the committed people, then He strengthens their heart. And so if you need strength in your heart, strengthen your, your relationship strength with Him, strengthen in any way, shape, or form, you feel weak in any way, then I encourage you that you beef up your commitment to God, that you say, okay, God, I don't know how and what, but I'm going to, I'm going to put, pour on the pedal to the metal. I'm going to pour on the intentionality. I'm going to zero in and focus. I'm going to ramp up my commitment to you, God, because I need your strength. And you can look and look and look, and you're going to find that I am fully committed. My heart is fully committed. And maybe you're watching right now and you are not fully committed to God. Maybe you're kind of one foot in, one foot out. Maybe you kind of walk the fence and you're like, yeah, you know, if it works out, cool. If it doesn't work out, you know, there's nothing too much lost. And God says either you're going to be hot for him or you're going to be cold. There's not walking the fence. There's not straddling the line. Straddling the line is unwise. We're going to talk about wisdom. Jehoshaphat tried to straddle the line and his relationship with the northern kingdom, and it totally blew up in his face. You can't straddle the line with God. Either you're for him or you're not. And there's no middle ground. And God is saying to you and calling, I'm saying this with love in my heart. He's speaking to some of you right now and saying, it's time to own up, pony up and pick the side. And I want to encourage you that you pick the God side. You don't fritter around and play around with foolishness. You make a decision and you make a decision today and you make a decision now. I encourage you, pick up the phone and call and say, I am deciding to be on God's side. I am deciding to follow Jesus. I am deciding I am walking away from those foolish things, those decisions that I've made, the people, the relationships that have been, been very destructive. I'm walking away from those and I'm making a decision to follow God. Pick up the phone and call, get on the website, say, pray for me. We want to pray for you that God will strengthen you and help you to follow through on that fully committed decision to follow him. Mom, I know that's really, really the Holy Spirit speaking right now. Yes. And very people much. are calling in and they are responding to this yep. because it's stupid not to follow God. It is, it is just stupid. <laughs> it is. And I think with Jehoshaphat too, God sent various prophets to he him did. and would warn him mm -hmm. after each of these occasions. Why mm -hmm. are you hanging out with this kind mm -hmm. of crowd? Even Elisha, when he gets involved in that battle with the Moabites mm -hmm. in the Valley of Ditches, he says, you know, I wouldn't even give time and attention to King Jehoram. Yep or to the king of Edom, it's you. Yep. In other words, what are you in this crowd? Yeah, right. I'll give you a revelation of how yeah. to have a miracle. And you know, Sarah, listening to people on weak things, mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time a young pastor said to me, a very successful pastor, he said, Marilyn, I have a word for you. And so, you know, I'm thinking, well, what is he gonna tell me? He said, uh, you love the Bible. You know the Bible very well. And so he said, you can just kind of pull out and preach from anything. But he said, you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit telling you is the Bible for this occasion? Hmm. And, you know, at first it kind of rocked me a little bit. I thought, well, he's young. But it was true. Hmm. You know, it was easy for me to think, well, yeah, this would be good here. But what is the Holy Spirit saying? So, you know, wisdom can come in a lot of different packages. Right. Right. And like these prophets coming to Jehoshaphat, it should have been enough of a warning. Mm -hmm. Stop this compromise. Right, right. Stop it. Right. But he keeps getting into the same thing, right. though he's one of the most successful kings Judah ever has. And you know, Mom, I believe this. God sends people into our lives mm -hmm. and will speak wisdom to us in different ways, in different right. contexts. But if we're not careful, we dismiss it because we don't like the presentation. Like the young guy, yeah, the young pastor. Yeah, you yeah. could have blown him off and said, yeah. no, no, no. But there was some truth in it. And you took the truth and you're like, yep, that's true. And I'm going to apply that. And sometimes when we don't like the presentation, yeah. maybe it's, we don't like the packaging. Maybe they didn't say it the right way. Right. Maybe they didn't have grace. Maybe they weren't politically correct. Maybe they were crude in their presentation. Maybe blah, blah. And so many times if, if, it, if we don't like the way it's presented, then right. we just kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. And God wants to say, look, you need to listen. You may not like what you hear, but just because you don't like it or like the presentation doesn't mean there's some truth. There's not truth in it. And so we have to be very careful. A w wise person, and I like what you say, you've always told me this growing up, when you eat a fish, you spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. And there are things where, okay, you may not like the way it's presented, 
but there's guts in there that you can use and make something good out of that. Yeah. And so I encourage you. Take if you're, the good. Leave yeah, the bad. totally, totally. And yeah. if you're struggling on that, man, I encourage you to pick up the phone and call. We want to pray for you that God would help you to take the good and leave the bad, eat the fish and spit out the bones. God wants to help you on that or, you know, get on the website. But these are very important. And Jehoshaphat didn't follow wise counsel. He didn't follow the, the plan of God. Well, he didn't in that level. And so I looked right. at the levels where he didn't follow wisdom. He didn't in marrying his da his son right. to one of Ahab's children. Right. Dear Lord, what a mess that was. And he died, didn't get to see how bad it was. He didn't in getting going into battle with Jehoram, uh, that was Ahab's right. son, and God rescued him yeah. with the advice of Elisha. Thank God for that. And then when he went in that battle and they were out to kill the king right. and he could have been killed, God protected him. Yeah. But at the end of his life, financially, he made a very, very bad decision mm. because Ahab's children said, let's go in business together. Let's get a fleet of ships yep. and let's go into this area. We're going to pick up gold. We're going to come out smelling like a rose. And so see, we can reason away mm -hmm the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. We can reason it away. Well, you know, they probably are smart in this mm -hmm. and I probably could make some more money. Mm -hmm. And so he gets into it yeah. and the whole fleet of ships is shipwrecked mm -hmm. and it said he got it. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, as I said, God protected him in two of these situations yeah. very wonderfully. Yeah. But when he married his son, yeah. allow that compromise, Oof. that hurt Judah yeah. big, big time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I could go into many, many things about wisdom here with Jehoshaphat. I mean, he is one of the wisest kings they ever had. I'm just pointing out his weaknesses so that you can see we have to have godly wisdom in every area of our lives. Godly wisdom in the way we take care of our bodies. Godly wisdom in the way we handle our children. Godly wisdom in the way we handle our money. Uh, godly wisdom in the way we handle relationships, our jobs. And you can just call us right now and say, I need wisdom in these areas. Mm -hmm. And name them fast, you know, don't take a long time. And we're going to pray for you. Sarah, before we have TV taping or before mm -hmm. I speak, I probably get 50, 60 people praying for me. Mm -hmm. And they may not all be real spiritual people. Someone say, well, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I'm preaching. Would you pray for me? Well, yeah, I'll pray for you. Yep. And so you get all these people praying. That's why I love the fact that you can call in for prayer and that we take it very seriously. Or you can get on the website and you know leave what you need. Because you get enough people praying for you, it will help you in the areas where you're weak. Yeah. And I know the prayers of people have taken me through circumstances. I was not cool enough, right. smart enough, spiritual right. enough to make it and yet came out smelling like a rose. Ugh. Yeah. Prayer is key for wisdom. It's true. It's true. And oftentimes I've seen this. A lot of times we'll have wisdom and we're comfortable in, in particular yeah. specialties or areas. Yeah. You know, we're good in this, but oftentimes we have a blind spot like, like Jehoshaphat. He had a blind spot and a yeah. pretty sizable blind spot. And so I think sometimes if we're not careful, there can be some pride. And not only that, Mom, I also think if we're not careful with those, those areas where we are wise, if we're not careful, we tend to not depend on God. That's cool, yeah. And if we're not depending on God, yeah, that's just a dead end. Out of sync. No matter what happens, no matter how sync. smart you are, no matter how wise you are, if you're not depending on God, then that's a dead end. And, and we need to always depend on God in our marriages, in our health, in our finances. And, and when I say depend on God, I'm not saying don't do anything. Or no, no, you know, no, I'm no, saying no. get uh, get Ask wise. Him what to yeah, do. absolutely, and and Wisdom get his input. Action. Absolutely, yeah. but depend on God. Depend on God in all these areas. And 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 when we do that, you know, Matthew six thirty three, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. And so, if we're increasing the God content and God awareness and God presence oh, in our that. life, then all these things start to fall into place. But let's, let's always be beefing it up with God. Let's always be looking, I can take more of God. I can give more to God. I can surrender more to God. I can depend more on God. The truth of it is we all need as much of God, as much of Jesus, as much of the Holy Spirit, as much of the Word as we can get in our lives. We need Him every day, every second, every moment. You and I, we need God. Emotional issues are so challenging 
You can have struggles with depression. You can have struggles with fear, anxiety, frustration, worry. There's all kinds. There's a whole spectrum of emotional issues that challenge us and that we have to deal with. And I want to encourage you today that you do not have to be controlled by your emotions, that God can absolutely come and bring peace into your heart, can bring uh, uh, joy where there's been depression, can bring uh, serenity where there's been anxiety. God can absolutely replace all of the negative stuff and replace it with who He is and what He does, the fruit of the Spirit. I want to encourage you, get on the phone right now. Call because we want to pray for you that God will help you with your emotions, not to be controlled by them, but to see His power overcome and also replace to replace the bad with the good. So get on the phone or get on the website. And I want to encourage you with this. Remember that David always said, why so downcast, O oh my soul, put your trust in God. And so many times I've said that to myself, Sarah, why are you upset? Why are you discouraged? Why are you nervous? Why are you frustrated? Why are you afraid? And sometimes we get afraid of the future. We get fearful of this situation. We get nervous about this. We worry about what hasn't happened all kinds of things, but I want to encourage you today that God says to you, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your trust in God. And you and I both know that trusting in God is the best solution, the best solution for emotional struggle. So I encourage you today, get on the phone. Let us pray for you. Let us pray for those emotional needs that you have. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website. We want to pray for you to see God turn what's been a struggle, what's been a difficulty, what's been a hardship, even what's been a failure for you in your emotional life. Turn that into his victory, into his peace, into his joy, into his strength, into his power. So let us pray for you. It's a tremendous privilege and an honor and a transformation for you even today. Emotional suffering can take many forms. Some people battle fear. Others carry the wounds of emotional abuse, grief, rejection, disappointment, betrayal, and even abandonment. But here's the amazing news. Jesus provided for healing and wholeness in our emotions on the cross, just as he provided for our physical healing. You just have to know how to appropriate it. Mom has a teaching that really unpacks this truth in a clear and powerful way. It is called wholehearted and for a limited time, it is our thank you gift to you for your gift of any amount to this ministry. Here's more information on how to share a gift and receive this great resource in your life for healing emotions. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. These powerful words are found in Isaiah 53 and make it clear that Jesus' redeeming healing work on the cross included healing for our emotions. For a limited time, you can receive Marilyn's teaching on healing for your emotions as our special thank you for sharing a gift of any size. It will help you understand how to appropriate healing for your emotions and to walk in wholeness and peace. But if you can share a seed gift of $53 or more in support of the outreaches of Marilyn Hickey Ministries, we want to send you a powerful bundle of resources. We're calling our First Aid Kit for Your Emotions. This kit includes the powerful soft cover book, God's Prescription for a Hurting Heart. The two CD set titled Wholehearted, Keys for Emotional Healing and Prosperity for Your Soul, plus a bottle of anointing oil for your ministering this kind of healing to yourself and to those you love. Sow an Isaiah 53 seed gift right now and receive your own first aid kit for your emotions. Call or click right now. Share online at marilynandsarah.org. Walk in wholeness in your emotions and prosperity in your soul. Call today, 303-690-1111. 303-690-1111. 